It was a pretty unforgettable moment about 30 some years ago. Josh, our oldest son, who's now the senior pastor of a wonderful church, cross church, that this wonderful church made possible. But it was when he was, gosh, only about two years old. And he had been hospitalized by the pediatrician because he couldn't gain weight. And they had performed one painful test on him to try to figure it out after another one. And the hospitalizations went on for a couple of years. One test I remember was particularly unnerving. So obviously him, but also me. They had, because his small veins finally collapsed from so many blood draws, trying to figure out what was causing the problems, they had begun to have to take blood out of his neck, out of his juggler vein. And it was a grueling experience. They would hold his little two-year-old body down, and he was too young to, to deal with logically. I wanted to be there so he didn't feel alone, but he'd look at me with these eyes like, Mama, how can you let them do this to me? And I couldn't make any sense out of it. And so it, this one day was particularly rough. And I, I would, after the, uh, the blood draw and the juggler, I was sitting by his bed and the medical student sheepishly walked back into the room about an hour later. And he was kind of, it was obvious something was wrong. And then he, he spoke up and he said, I'm real sorry, Mrs. Mayo, but we're going to have to draw the blood again. I dropped it. And wow, to say that I was angry would be the understatement of the weekend. You know, I had hit my end with the mom's heart. And after we went through an agonizing second run at the juggler vein, whew, uh, I got on the hospital elevator. And this is really what happened. I pounded on the walls. Now, keep in mind, I was alone on the elevator, <laughs> lest you wonder that I had gone cuckoo and, and everybody was enjoying the show. But I said to the Lord, if this is how you treat your friends, I'd hate to see how you treat your enemies. Now, let me stop and say, that's just how big a father we have, because he takes guff that he doesn't deserve, and he understands it. Isn't that awesome? For real. Wasn't his fault. And then I said to him, listen, it, you know, am I going to have to keep going around this same mountain the same problem, this same mountain over and over again? I mean, is anybody up there even listening to me? And hours later, I was, after things had calmed down, I was back in Josh's room, and he was starting to fall asleep that night. And I was reading my Bible, and I happened to be in the book of Deuteronomy. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't usually get a lot of promises from the book of Deuteronomy. <laughs> Due to who, you know? And, but I did that night, Deuteronomy 2, 3. And remember, I'd said, look, am I just going to keep going around this mountain over and over? That's what I meant by the medical challenges of two years. Deuteronomy 2, 3, exact words. You have encompassed this mountain long enough. That was a while. You have encompassed this mountain long enough. You know, I just said, I'm tired of going around this mountain. And I knew in my heart what the Lord was giving him. He was saying, Jeannie, I, I, I haven't gone anywhere. I'm with you. And you're coming out. You're, this season is coming to a close. And only a couple of days later, Josh was released from the hospital. We went home. And gradually, it wasn't an instantaneous miracle, but it was a slow healing. Uh, the Lord did on his body. We never went back to the hospital. And, and as the whole Mayo tribe can attest, we don't have problems gaining weight anymore. Oh, Jesus. Okay. So please, though, let me say again, most of your guidance won't be as pinpointed, as, as dramatic as that from the Word of God. Most of my guidance is just as I read the principles and then I, I put the word of God into me daily. And then when I come to a point in my life, that, that is already there in deposit. And I pull it out like maybe you're facing challenges in your life that are causing you to be fearful or, or uptight or a little worried or anxious. 
And, but you know that the word of God says, Jesus talking, my peace, my peace I give to you. My peace I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. And that's God's word for you. You don't need an angel to say it. It's right there. 